Following the completion of all the project management tasks, as well as the DNO application and technical survey, it was time to actually install the system. The first step was to put the scaffolding up which was done by a local scaffolding firm that we've worked with for over 10 years. The scaffolding went up very quickly and with minimal disruption. The scaffolders always take extra care not to damage the patio or the ground that the scaffolding is mounted on. And if there's a conservatory or any skylights below the scaffolding, then they'll also put up netting to make sure that if anything does fall, there's no risk to the house. Sam later commented on how impressed he was with the scaffolders. Following this, as I mentioned earlier on in the series, we decided to get a local trusted roofer to move the roof vents further up the roof so that we could fit 22 panels instead of 18. This did take a few hours, but ultimately it went very smoothly. A few days later, it was time for our in-house installers to come to site to fit the solar system. The first step was to measure up the roof to make sure that the system is perfectly in the middle and not skewed to one side as that really wouldn't look very good. Following this, it was time to install the mounting brackets and the rails. As you may have seen in the project management video, the bracket layout, which you can see on screen now, is determined by software. And it's important to follow it so that the load is spread evenly throughout the system and there's no risk of the roof being damaged or the panels flying off it. The software worked out that Sam's solar system needs 50 brackets in order to be properly secure to the roof. After the brackets were installed in the correct layout, then the railings were fitted onto the brackets. The panels then slide onto the railings as you'll see later on in the video. As any installer will tell you, slate roofs are tricky to work with and it takes a lot of time to carefully lift the tiles without breaking any. You also have to cut slate tiles in order to fit the mounting brackets, which is very time consuming. Because you have to cut the tile, you also have to fit a piece of lead flashing under every bracket to ensure the water tightness of the roof. Because of all this, it took the best part of a day to fit all the brackets and rails. If this were a concrete tile roof with less fragile tiles, then it would have been a lot quicker and the whole solar panel installation would have probably been done in one day. The next day, after the brackets and railings were all fitted, it was time to lay the solar DC cables under the panels. It's important to keep the DC cables neat and tidy, so we clip them to the rails that the panels slide onto. Once this was done, it was time to lift the panels to the roof and lay them on the railings. This wasn't the case for Sam's install, but for some large jobs with a high number of panels, we do have to be careful with the weight and loadings on the scaffolding. So sometimes have to only bring a few panels onto the scaffold at once and then fit them to the roof before bringing any more up. The panelling does take a while as it's important to make sure that they're all straight and level, otherwise the whole array can look crooked. Finally, after the panels were fitted, it was time to fit the solar skirt bird protection. We offer two types of bird protection, bird mesh and a product called solar skirt. For Sam's system, he opted for the solar skirt as it adds a very nice finish as well as keeping the birds out. We're very pleased with how this system turned out and think it looks really neat and complements the roof very well. To see the system actually up and running, please watch the next video on installing Sam's Tesla Powerwall 3.